Hello and welcome to the Spectrum Health Cardiac Rehab Education Series. My name is Grayson. I am an exercise specialist with Spectrum Health Cardiac Rehab, and this segment will review the risk factors for cardiovascular disease. Coronary artery disease is the most common form of heart disease. Coronary artery disease is the buildup of substances along the inner lining of the arteries of the heart. These substances include fats, cholesterol, blood products, fibrous tissue, and calcium deposits. Coronary artery disease develops when the major blood vessels that supply your heart become damaged or diseased. Cholesterol-containing deposits or plaques in your coronary arteries and inflammation are usually to blame for coronary artery disease. The coronary arteries supply blood, oxygen, and nutrients to your heart. A buildup of plaque can narrow these arteries, decreasing blood flow to your heart. Eventually, the reduced blood flow may cause chest pain, shortness of breath, or other signs and symptoms. Because coronary artery disease often develops over decades, you might not notice a problem until you have a significant blockage or a heart attack. However, you can take steps to prevent and treat coronary artery disease. A healthy lifestyle can make a big impact. There are several different risk factors for heart disease, some that we can control and some that we cannot. Risk factors that are unable to be modified include increased age, gender, family history, and race or ethnicity. According to the American Heart Association, four out of five people who die from coronary artery disease are 65 years or older. Why is this? Well, as we age, we have an increased chance of developing high blood pressure and diabetes. Our arteries can also become more stiff and less flexible. And also as we age, we are less likely to be active. Throughout our lives, many of us may develop a musculoskeletal issue or injury that starts our inactivity cycle. And once you fall out of a regular exercise routine, it can be difficult to restart. It is important to remember that no matter the age of a person, there is always some sort of physical activity that can be done. Men over 45 years of age and women over 55 years of age are at an increased risk for developing coronary artery disease. The risk for women increases after menopause. Prior to menopause, women tend to have higher levels of HDL than men, and HDL is known as our good cholesterol that is helping to keep our arteries unblocked. Family history can also increase your risk for heart disease. Your risk is higher if your father or brother was diagnosed with heart disease before age 55, or if your mother or sister developed it before age 65. This can be due to inherited genes that have predisposed you to an increased risk for heart disease. However, it can also come from learned unhealthy personal habits, such as smoking or eating an unhealthy diet. Race or ethnicity is the last of the four risk factors that we cannot control. African Americans do have the highest prevalence of coronary artery disease, including a higher incidence of hypertension, diabetes, and heart events. Part of this is due to socioeconomic status. Socioeconomic status refers to an individual's social position in relation to others based on income, education, occupation, and access to resources. A lack of income may prevent individuals from being able to afford healthy foods or even afford transportation to the grocery store, forcing the individuals to purchase processed foods from convenience stores as opposed to fresh fruits and vegetables. Furthermore, the lack of education on what behaviors are healthy for us and what foods are healthy for us can be a huge barrier to living a heart healthy lifestyle and reducing a risk. There are also cultural differences in what foods are prevalent in our diet, which can affect our risk for heart disease as well. The risk factors that we can control include high cholesterol, smoking, high blood pressure, stress, being overweight, physical inactivity, and diabetes. According to the American Heart Association, to reduce our risk for heart disease, we want to aim for a total cholesterol of under 200 milligrams per deciliter. 
LDL is known as our bad cholesterol as it sticks easily to the artery walls. We want to aim for under 100 and even lower if you have multiple risk factors. HDL is known as our good cholesterol. HDL finds and rescues the stuck LDL and cleans it out of our arteries to process it as waste. For HDL, we want to aim for greater than 60. To improve cholesterol, eat more fruits and vegetables and less saturated fat and cholesterol. Cholesterol only comes from animal products. So by reducing our consumption of animal products, we will greatly reduce our cholesterol levels. Regular exercise and weight loss can also improve cholesterol, as well as medications if prescribed. Lastly, do not smoke, as smoking has shown to increase our risk for heart disease in a multitude of ways. If you have had a lipid panel drawn, the panel will show all of your cholesterol levels, as well as your triglycerides. Triglycerides are a form of fat that is made in our bodies by the liver from excess fats, sugars, and alcohol in the diet. Triglycerides make the blood flow thicker and more sluggish, and our goal for triglycerides is less than 150. Physical activity and weight loss can help to improve triglyceride levels. A heart-healthy diet that limits simple and refined sugars and decreases total fat intake can also help with triglycerides. Try to limit or abstain from alcohol completely. Increase physical activity, tobacco cessation, and medications if prescribed can also help with triglycerides as well as many of our other risk factors. Smoking is one of the worst habits that we can have for our overall health. Smoking increases our heart rate and blood pressure, which causes increased stress to the heart over time. Smoking also damages the coronary artery lining and constricts the coronary arteries, creating a very small passage for blood to travel through. Smoking can trigger blood clots to form, and it also decreases our HDL. So our good cholesterol that is helping to clean out our arteries is now being reduced. The bottom of this slide has an internet link with information on ways to quit smoking from former tobacco users and numerous websites on tips for quitting smoking. The link also provides a lot of information on what the chemicals in these products are doing to our body. Quitting smoking has shown a 50% reduction in premature death. Quitting smoking also improves blood pressure, cholesterol, circulation, our immune system, and our lung function. Even if you are not a smoker, if someone close to you is, you are still at an increased risk. According to the American Heart Association, non-smokers who are exposed to secondhand smoke at home or at work increase their risk of developing heart disease by 25 to 30%. Chronic hypertension can also increase our risk for heart disease. For a normal resting blood pressure, aim for under 120 over 80. Blood pressures at 120 to 129 over 80 to 89 are classified as elevated. 130 to 139 over greater than 90 is classified as stage one hypertension and greater than 140 over 90 is classified as stage two hypertension. A resting blood pressure greater than 180 over 120 is known as a hypertensive crisis. If your blood pressure is greater than 180 over 120, wait about five minutes and check again. If the second reading is just as high and you are not experiencing any other associated symptoms of target organ damage, such as chest pain, shortness of breath, back pain, numbness or weakness, change in vision, or difficulty speaking, this would be considered a hypertensive urgency. Your healthcare provider may just have you adjust or add medications, but it doesn't necessarily require hospitalization. If your blood pressure reading is greater than 180 over 120 and you are experiencing any other associated symptoms that were just previously listed, then this would be considered a hypertensive emergency. Do not wait to see if your pressure comes down on its own. Call 911. Patients with diabetes or kidney disease want to aim for a blood pressure under 130 over 80. To assess your risk as it relates to blood pressure, 
use two resting blood pressures from two different settings. Reducing salt consumption can help tremendously with improvements in blood pressure. Weight loss, regular physical activity, and tobacco cessation can also help to reduce blood pressure. A decrease in alcohol consumption will help you to reach your blood pressure goals, as well as stress reduction and medications if prescribed. Being overweight is a risk factor for developing heart disease as it increases the rate of high cholesterol, high blood pressure, and diabetes. BMI, or percent body fat, can be used to determine if an individual is overweight. When an individual has diabetes, their body either does not make or does not respond properly to insulin. Without the proper insulin and response, an excess of glucose ends up in our bloodstream, which can cause damage to the arteries and small capillaries. The excess sugar in our bloodstream can also increase the risk for blood clots and help the LDL or bad cholesterol to form plaque more easily. Metabolic syndrome is a cluster of risk factors, including obesity, insulin resistance, and physical inactivity. Metabolic syndrome may be diagnosed if you have three or more of the following. A waist measurement greater than 35 inches for women or 40 inches for men triglycerides greater than 150, a fasting blood sugar greater than 110, an HDL less than 50, or a blood pressure greater than 130 over 85. According to the American Heart Association, individuals with metabolic syndrome have a two-fold increase in, ri in risk for heart attack or stroke and a five-fold increased risk for developing diabetes when compared to individuals who do not have metabolic syndrome. This last slide helps to highlight that there are more risk factors that we can control than factors that we cannot control. As a goal for you, try to pick two or three risk factors that apply to you and write down some changes that you can make to help reduce your risk. Thank you for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, please write them down and bring them to your next cardiac rehab visit.